Steel is a vital material at the heart of the modern world. Essential in industry, agriculture, and transport. In the home and building, Packaging and engineering, steel products are everywhere. Steel also forms the basis of the machinery for making nearly every product we possess. Without it, glass and wood cannot be shaped. Stone cannot be crushed. Concrete cannot be mixed. Other metals cannot be formed and plastics cannot be made. Without steel and the men and women who make it to higher and higher standards, our modern world would not exist. To help us understand what steel is, we first need to recognize that the main constituent is the element iron, which is extracted from iron ore in blast furnaces. Let us therefore look first of all at the iron making process. Iron ore is essentially iron oxide mixed with earthly impurities, such as clay and sandy soils, and small amounts of contaminants, such as phosphorus. To keep costs down and quality up to the highest possible standards, all of the ore used by British Steel today comes from the Americas, Australia and Scandinavia, and is brought to this country by large bulk carriers and unloaded at deep water ports near steelworks. It's then moved to stockyards where ores from different areas are stored separately before being blended to obtain the most favorable mix. Some of the blended ore is mixed with small pieces of coke called breeze and heated to form an iron-rich clinker called sinter. This process is important because it reduces waste and provides an efficient raw material for iron making. The fuel used in the blast furnace is coke, which is made at British Steel sites from carefully selected grades of coking coal. Most of this now has to be imported, and different types are stocked separately and carefully blended before being transferred to batteries of coke ovens. The coal is heated in sealed ovens to remove volatile constituents until it becomes coke when it is pushed from the ovens, cooled and graded before being ready for use in the furnace. A large proportion of the volatile material produced in this process is gas, which is used as a fuel in the works, while byproducts such as tar, benzol and sulfur are also extracted for further refining. Coke, ore and sinter are charged into the top of the blast furnace along with limestone. A hot air blast from which the furnace gets its name is injected through nozzles called tweers in the base of the furnace. This hot air blast may be oxygen enriched and can also carry in coal or oil to provide additional fuel and reduce coke requirements. The air and coke cause reactions to take place, which release the iron from the oxide. The blast fans the heat in the furnace to white-hot intensity, and the iron melts to form a pool of molten metal at the bottom of the furnace. Blast furnace iron differs from pure iron in that during the iron making process, carbon is absorbed from the coke. 
Above that, a separate molten layer of impurities called slag is formed. Iron making is a continuous process. When enough iron has accumulated at the bottom of the furnace, it is tapped off at around 1500 degrees Celsius into ladles. These can be torpedo ladles, so-called because of their shape. Meanwhile, raw materials continue to be charged in at the top of the furnace, and the hot air blast continues to be blown in at the bottom. This process goes on through the life of the furnace, which can be 10 years or more, after which the heat-resisting refractory bricks inside become worn and have to be replaced. Off the top of the blast furnace, the liquid iron produced is between 90 and 95% pure iron. This is known as hot metal. This hot metal contains some impurities, depending on the quality of the coke and ores used in the process. From a steelmaker's point of view, the main impurities are carbon, silicon, sulphur, phosphorus and manganese. The carbon content of blast furnace iron is approximately 4.5% and it's therefore brittle and unsuitable for rolling into other products. In the steel making process, the carbon content will be significantly reduced to produce a tougher and more ductile steel. The basic raw materials for steel making are hot metal from the blast furnace, cold steel scrap or a mixture of both. The amounts and proportions of material used vary according to the process and the type of steel being made. There are many forms of steel, each with its own specific chemical analysis to meet the widely varying needs of the many different applications for steel products. There are soft steels, hard steels, springy ones and electrical ones not to mention a whole host of stainless and alloy steels which contain other elements to give them their specialist properties. During this century, the techniques of steel making have undergone vast changes in scale and new processes have been developed to meet the demands of speed, quantity and quality. However, only two major steel making processes are used by British Steel today. Basic oxygen steel making and electric arc. Basic oxygen steel making, or BOS for short, is used for making bulk steels. Those used for consumer products and in construction and heavy industry. The basic oxygen process is the major modern method of making steel. Modern furnaces, called vessels, will take a charge of up to 350 tonnes at a time and convert it into steel with a charge to tap time of 40 minutes or less. Hot metal is the principal material used in the process. The hot metal can be pre-treated if necessary and residual slag is removed. The vessel is tilted and charged first with carefully selected scrap and then with molten iron, which makes up three quarters of the charge before being returned to the upright position. A water-cooled oxygen lance is lowered into the vessel and high purity oxygen is blown in at more than twice the speed of sound. The oxygen combines with unwanted elements, with the carbon to produce carbon monoxide, and then further with that to make some carbon dioxide. The oxygen also combines with the other unwanted elements to form a slag, which floats on the top of the steel, just as the iron-making slag floated on top of the iron. The reactions take place during what is known as the carbon boil. 
This generates an enormous amount of heat. The temperature within the vessel is controlled by the amount of steel scrap that has been added. During the blow, lime is added to form a slag. The quantities of scrap, hot metal, lime and other fluxes are calculated to ensure the correct steel temperature and composition. In many plants, refining is assisted by the injection of gases such as argon, nitrogen, carbon dioxide through the base of the vessel. After refining, samples are taken and the vessel tilts to tap or pour the steel at around 1,650 degrees Celsius into a ladle. During tapping, alloy additions are made to adjust steel composition and the ladle can be covered with a lid to prevent heat loss. When all the steel has been tapped, the vessel is turned upside down and the slag is emptied out into a ladle to be taken away and cooled. British Steel collect the gases produced in this and other processes. These are then cleaned and reused as a fuel around the works. Unlike the BOS process, the electric arc furnace uses only cold scrap metal as its raw material. Hot metal plays no part. The process was originally used solely for making steel of special high quality, as it gave more precise control over the composition of the steel. Today, however, it's also employed in making more widely used steels, including alloy and stainless grades, as well as some special carbon and low alloy steels. In fact, around 25% of the world's steel is produced in electric arc furnaces, making it one of the world's largest recycling processes. The furnace consists of a circular bath with a movable roof, through which three graphite electrodes can be raised or lowered. At the start of the process, the electrodes are withdrawn and the roof is swung clear. The steel scrap is then charged into the furnace. When charging is complete, a powerful electric current is passed by the electrodes through the charge. An arc is created and the heat generated melts the scrap. Additions of lime and floor spar are added as fluxes and oxygen is blown into the melt. As a result, impurities in the metal are oxidized and combine with the lime to form a liquid slag. Samples of steel are taken and analyzed to check composition and when correct temperature and composition have been achieved, the furnace is tapped into a ladle. Final adjustments to precise customer specification can be made by adding alloys during tapping. Modern electric arc furnaces can make up to 150 tons of steel in a single melt in less than an hour and a half. After the molten steel is tapped into the ladle from either the basic oxygen converter or the electric arc furnace, one or more extra treatments may be given depending upon the grade of steel being made. These further processes are called secondary steelmaking and are crucially important in determining the quality of the final steel product. One of the most common techniques is inert gas stirring, in which argon gas is bubbled into the steel near the bottom of the ladle to ensure complete evenness of composition and temperature. Small adjustments to the composition of the steel as well as further purification can be achieved by injecting special chemicals into the ladle. This is done by blowing fine powder with argon gas down a refractory lens deep into the steel or by feeding in the special chemical enclosed in a thin steel sheath as wire. The highest quality steels require a process called vacuum degassing. Here, the liquid metal is circulated using argon gas through a tank where a vacuum removes the harmful gases, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Some grades of steel require a combination of all of these. Together, these processes make the steel composition more uniform and exact. 
and may remove even more of the unwanted chemical elements still present in the steel. To make sure that the steel reaches the casting stage at a high enough temperature, the ladle arc process is used. Alloys can be added in bulk or injected at the ladle furnace. Special slags can also be added to purify the steel, particularly to achieve extremely low levels of sulphur. And before steel can be formed into plates, sheets, sections, strip, bars, beams or tubes, it has to solidify and be formed into standard basic shapes called billets, blooms or slabs. Now, the most modern and efficient method of forming these shapes is called continuous casting. Molten steel is brought to the continuous casting machine in a ladle with an opening and closing valve at the bottom. The valve is opened and the steel is allowed to flow into a tundish through a refractory tube. The tundish is a reservoir supplying steel to the heart of the machine, a water-cooled copper mould within which solidification takes place. At the same time as molten steel is allowed to flow into the top of the mould, it's drawn from the bottom with just the outer shell solidified and drawn downwards through a curved arrangement of support rolls and water sprays. Finally, it emerges horizontally as solid steel at the discharge end of the machine, where it's cut to the required length by gas burners. The other method of casting is to pour molten steel into moulds to make shapes called ingots, which can then be reheated for rolling into the required shapes. This is a more old-fashioned and less efficient process route. The processes we've looked at involve state-of-the-art technology, harnessed to a powerful commitment by a highly trained, high-caliber workforce. This enables British steel to take ore formed millions of years ago and transform it into a product to take our lives into the 21st century. Now the new steel has solidified, it will be shaped by us, our customers and their customers, until it becomes a valuable servant for you, the ultimate customer.